I call the honourable member Chris Farfoe to Lohani. Talohani, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak uh, to, uh, to, uh, to part one of the Criminal Procedures Legislation Bill. And I just did want to begin where the Honourable Phil Goff left off, because the Minister in the Chair, the Honourable Chester Burrows, is someone uh, who was a very good minister. Uh, and uh, someone who, on this side of the house, this, um, this <laughs> respects. Um, and I'd like to um, just just carry on what Mr. Uh, uh, Goff said and praise him for the way in which he has uh, tackled this criminal procedures legislation bill because it's been absolutely textbook, absolutely textbook. Right. You could not uh, do it any better. Um, but, and if I were um, the Honourable Judith Collins and the Honourable Amy Adams, I would be making an appointment with um, uh, the Honourable Chester Burrows and just to discuss how the process should work in this New Zealand parliamentary democracy. Um, because the Honourable Chester Burrows has done this textbook. He's gone out and he's assessed the situation. Um, he's consulted. He has put before this House a very good piece of legislation. Uh, that went through the Select Committee scrutiny stage. Uh, people submitted and gave their concerns. He listened. Uh, the Select Committee amended the legislation, and that has been supported by the Minister. And now this legislation is before the House being debated. And as uh, you have seen, uh, in contrast to the two previous pieces of legislation that were immediately uh, before this Criminal Procedures Legislation Bill, an outbreak of Aroha has happened because of the way that this process has been put uh, through this House. So if you were watching the House uh, roughly 15 hours ago, you would have been seeing absolutely robust debate um, and fierce opposition uh, to the legislation that was going through this House. But now, because of the way that the Honourable Chester Burrows has shepherded this legislation through this House in a textbook manner, with consultation, cross-party <coughs> coordination and consultation to make sure that this piece of legislation is fit for purpose, um, you're seeing that, that, that this piece of legislation has very wide support. And I just did want to... Um, uh, commend the uh, Minister and the Chair for the way he has done this because I, I think uh, at least two of his colleagues, at least uh, two of his colleagues, could certainly learn uh, from the way that he has shepherded this piece of legislation through the House. I did want to point to um, a section of the Criminal Procedures Legislation Bill uh, which I think will seriously um, address the issues that um, the Bill sets out to address. Um, and I think Mr Goff uh, pointed out those issues. Uh, and that is the serious excessive costs of the criminal procedures uh, system, uh, the complexity of the criminal procedures system, and also the serious delays that are happening uh, within our, uh, our court system at the moment. And um, the, the Justice and Electoral Select Committee uh, has inserted uh, Section 14A, I believe, which uh, allows a judge or registrar to waive certain fees if a judge is satisfied that someone is unable to or should not be required to pay those fees. And I think that is certainly something that will help uh, in the um, uh, process of quality of justice to allow those who, uh, where cost may be a hindrance to them uh, getting a fair trial, uh, will be able to help them uh, get through the uh, justice system, through the criminal procedures uh, system, uh, much, much easier. So I did want to commend uh, the Justice and Electoral Select Committee uh, for that change. Uh, again, it is one of those changes that has been made with cross-party support. Um, and again, I did want to uh, commend the Minister and the Chair for making sure, and uh, the Chair of the Select Committee, Scott Simpson, uh, as someone who should also get some praise for the way that, that this process has worked. Um, and, and look at the way that that has happened in that Select Committee process um, and the contrast uh, of that in terms of what we're going to see uh, through a truncated uh, Select Committee process for the um, uh, two pieces of intelligence legislation uh, that are going through the House at the moment. Um, there's also um, Section 14B, uh, which is going to make it uh, much easier for people to access court documents, um, and I think that goes to the heart of addressing the issue of the complexity of uh, the criminal procedures um, system, uh, where um, a lot of people who are going through that system uh, were finding it very difficult uh, to manoeuvre their way around uh, the complexity of the system. Um, so, I, I, just before I finish, I just wanted to re reiterate again um, and to congratulate the Honourable Chester Burrows for this textbook manner in which he's done it. Um, there has been um, assessment, um, the drafting of, of appropriate legislation, the, committee, the, the select committee has gone out and listened and made the appropriate amendments, uh, and we believe that the Honourable Amy Adams and the Honourable Judith Collins should take heed 
of the process that has been put place here uh, with um, the Honourable Chester Burroughs and look for some time in his diary. The question is, did part one stand par? Sorry. Yeah, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is at part two, which is debate on clauses 18 through to 34, and the schedule number two stand par. The question. <laughs> Someone standing? Uh, it's not right. uh, I'll call the honourable member Dennis Arrock. Thank you, Mr.